Hello everyone. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, so, okay, let me just go to the presentation. <laughs> okay, so we will uh, wait for, for a few minutes so that others can join. Okay, meanwhile, I will brief you about what is it that we are going to do. So we'll see like a small introduction to face recognition uh, and we will we will uh, see how to code face detection and face recognition in python okay so it will be a live coding uh, kind of stuff so if you want to try along with me uh, you can try okay and we will be using google collab uh, for everything so i will just uh, show you how google collab looks uh, i think most of you uh, aware about Google Colab. So it's a, a Google Cloud platform uh, which provides access to Python notebooks. And uh, you can easily mount your Google Drive in it. So I've already mounted it for this session. Okay, and we will be using face recognition package. Okay, which you can install using this uh, command. Okay, I have already done it for you so that we don't have to wait during the session. So if you guys want to try the coding along with me, so maybe you can you can try these things. <clears throat> so we will start at uh, seven five. We'll just wait for two more minutes. So we will start in another one minute. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> so welcome everyone. I'm Anil Sharma and we will be talking about face recognition using Python in this lecture. 
so what what we will learn today is that i have divided this uh, lecture in five sections in the section 1 we will see an introduction to machine learning systems and in the second section we will see introduction to face recognition again okay, then in section 3 and section 4 we will uh, see about face detection and face recognition and we will perform it live uh, using some code examples okay and then in the fifth section i will leave you with a take home exercise where you can uh, use the learning from this lecture to build your own home surveillance system using face recognition so before proceeding with the everything like what you should already know is basic programming experience in python and if you don't uh, know python i would suggest you to uh, go with this reference block tools that we will be using this lecture is google collaboratory which is a google cloud platform uh, it provides access to python uh, notebook and uh, you can freely access a gpu uh, on it alternatively you can also use pycharm or jupyter notebook or you can also uh, directly work in command line if you are comfortable with it so we will be using dlib machine learning library over to which like face recognition package is available in python and we will be using face recognition package which provides free access to the face detection and face recognition methods uh, from the dlib library okay its installation is very simple uh, using this command pip install face recognition so let's just uh, start with introduction to machine learning systems <clears throat> so a machine learning system is a two step approach where uh, let's say if we are talking about classification based approach uh we we have an image of uh, let's say a car okay which is blue in color okay and then the in the the first step in machine learning system is to perform feature extraction where in the traditional machine learning system we used to write a, a script to extract the features from the input image so for example in this case uh, the features could be uh the two circles on the image uh, it could be uh the shape of the car okay and then after feature extraction we perform classification which is which could be a uh, like any classifier we will see uh, in the next slide okay and then the which kind of category the input belongs to so for example whether it's a car or it's not a car okay so let's just see a small introduction to binary classification okay uh, let's say if we have a problem called uh, like to classify between cats and dogs so uh, like let's say we have a neural network based systems and we will fed an image of a cat to the system then the output of the neural network should be that uh, should be the cat okay and if we fed the image of the dog then the output of the neural network should be dog similarly we can do face uh, sorry mask and no mask classification where a machine learning system will first detect uh, whether the image contains a face okay and then in the second step it will say whether that face contains a mask or it doesn't contain a mask third example of binary classification is uh, like whether uh, like a given image contains a face or it doesn't contain a face and there are many more examples like this okay so a machine learning system for classification contains two steps one is a feature extraction and second is classification okay so we have seen this image in one of the previous slide so the features are an individual measurable property or characteristics of the input data for example like the trajectory or the shape of uh, this car is one such feature the color of the car is one such feature the bonnet of the car is one such feature then in the second step we are performing classification so classification is a process of categorizing given set of data into classes or categories in so in these examples we will assume that the number of classes and the number of categories are known to us so for example in this case that i'm showing we are saying that there are only two categories that means whether the input contains a car or it doesn't contain a car that means binary classification problem so in the modern uh, ai systems or machine learning systems we don't do feature extraction manually so that means uh, we just fed the input image to the deep learning based system 
and it will automatically perform the feature extraction and classification for us and it will directly give the output that is whether it's a car or it's not a car. So the machine learning systems are working in two stages. The first is a training stage and second is a testing stage. In the training stage, what we are doing is we are feeding the input data to the learning system and we are also providing the correct corresponding output. Okay, and then this learning system is doing the feature extraction and learning which features correspond to which output. So that means it is learning a mapping between input and the correct labels. Then in the testing stage, we fed a new input data to the learning system and the learning system will use its learning from the training stage to best guess what kind of category the new input data belongs to. So that means we are learning during the training phase and we are using the learning during the testing phase. So why are we talking about machine learning or deep learning system? Why are we using these uh, like in, in, in most of the problems like face recognition, cat versus dog classification or any other problem? So it is because these systems have led to huge advances in performance. And many of these systems have shown human level performance or more than that. And the, the reason for that is because we have now access to large amount of data. So for example, ImageNet dataset made breakthroughs in object detection and image recognition. Another reason is the computational power. Nowadays, we have access to GPUs and TPUs. And even many cloud platforms have provided free access to it. So for example, Google Colab provides free access to GPUs and TPUs. So, the big companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google have access to large amount of data. For example, Facebook has access to all our data that we upload on Facebook, whether it's images or videos. That's why we can say that their system are highly accurate. They have access to a very large amount of data that no one has, and they have very large computational power. So that's why they, they can train systems which are highly accurate. Okay, so this was a small introduction to machine learning system. Now we will see a, an introduction to face recognition and then we will see is, see some of the code examples. So face recognition is the ability of a machine system to recognize a person's face in an image. So that means we are teaching computers how to detect and recognize a face. So for example, in this image, we have a machine learning system. We are feeding this image as input to the system. And the machine learning system is outputting where the face is contained. That means it is doing face detection. And along with it, it is also identifying its identity. That means this face belongs to John. So there is a, a difference between face detection and face recognition. Uh, so in face detection, just see this left, uh, uh, left side image where we are doing only face detection. So in face detection, we only talk about detection and local, uh, localizing the face. So that means there are five faces. In face detection, we only care about how many faces are there and where these faces are, uh, are contained in the image. Whereas in face recognition, we are not only talking about face detection, but a few other aspects as well. So for example, in this image, the machine learning system is identifying the location of the face and it is also identifying its identity. So that means it says that this face belongs to Nicole. And many machine learning system can also do gender identification and age identification of, from the detected face. And the modern AI system can also do emotion recognition from the detected face. So for example, in this case, the machine learning system is, says, says, is saying that the detected face is smiling and the system's confidence is 96% in saying so. Okay, so let us first see a few applications of face recognition. Okay, one of the common is in digital photography where we embed face detection in the cameras itself so that the cameras can automatically fo focus on the faces in the image and they can provide better quality face images. Another important aspect is to automatic uh, dynamic range enhancement where if we if the image is taken in a bright region or a dark region so that the cameras can automatically perform the dynamic range enhancement so that we can get good 
quality face images. Another application is surveillance, where the system has to recognize all the person coming in a building. Okay, so for example, in this image, the system is identifying the identities of all the faces. And if an unknown face comes in the building, then the system can automatically inform the security. Another application is in tele-education. In the post-COVID scenario, we will see that most of the education has shifted online. So nowadays, is it, the requirement is to do automatic attendance calculation. So what we can do is we can detect the faces and we can recognize who all are attending the sessions. It, these are also useful for identifying whether the person is attentive or not. So there are many other examples. So for example, album organization, where we organize the photos and categorize them by different people. We can also do emotion and expression recognition. So for example, if we can recognize emotions from the face, let's say if you're talking about Alexa or Amazon Echo, then after detecting the emotion of the face, a corresponding music can be played. So for example, if you are, if the person is feeling sad, then uh, some music can be played, which will, which will improve the mood of the person. Another application is identifying the number of the unique people, which is useful for marketing, where the people have to identify who is the unique person who is coming to a particular uh, store, and then they can do perfect or like better marketing to the new person as compared to the person who is coming again again. So there are many tools available for face recognition. Uh, many commercial and open source tools are available. So for commercial uh, tools, you require to share the data with a cloud. Okay, so that means you are uploading your face images. The face recognition will happen on the cloud and then you will get the results. Okay, so the, one of the most common commercial face recognition API is Amazon Recognition API, which can perform face recognition, emotion detection and motion tracking from the images. Another common API is Microsoft Azure Face API, which can perform face recognition, age and gender detection, and face similarity matching. So there are many open source APIs as well, which can work offline. So that means if you are making a product or making an application, which, which you want to work offline, so then you can use these open source APIs. So one of the most common is open face API and another is DLIP, which is highly commonly used because it provides easy access to pre-trained models. And over to that, a face recognition package is written by uh, Android, which provides like access to face detection and face recognition just by a function code. So we will be using this face recognition API so that you can easily code face recognition and can develop intuitive applications. Okay, so this was a small introduction of machine learning systems and uh, face recognition. So now we will see some code examples to perform face detection and face recognition. Okay, so before proceeding, I would like to say if any of you have any question, so you can comment on the live chat and then after the lecture we can take those doubts and if there is something urgent uh, maybe we can we will see uh, after after this section i will i will try to take a few questions and then we can proceed with the next section okay so face detection is the ability to detect and locate faces in the image so that means using this technology we are teaching computers whether an image contains a face Okay, so that means we are fedding an image, okay, and the machine learning system will say, yes, it contains a face or it doesn't contain a face. Okay, it will also look, also return the location of the face. So before proceeding how to do face uh, detection, let's just first see what is a sliding window classifier. Okay, so earlier, in the earlier images, you were seeing a very small face image, but in general, in real world, we have large images and the face is very small. So how to perform face detection in that case? So what we will be using is we will be using a sliding window classifier. We will, we will take a small window from in the, in the large image and then we will, puff, we will use face detection to find whether that window contains a face or not. 
and then we will slide this window over whole image and then we will repeat this process okay so for example in this case we have slided on the whole image and then this is the output of the system okay that this particular window contains a face okay so we will be using this in our face detection example okay so there are many common face detector algorithms one is viola jones another is face ba feature based detectors and and the third one and the most common one is neural network based so the viola jones is a traditional machine learning based approach to perform face detection okay it uses decision tree and it is very fast which which run very well on the low resource devices but its disadvantage was that it has very large number of false positives so that's why nowadays we are not using the, this algorithm but before a decade it was the most common face detection algorithm the second is feature based where the most common is hog based features in the hog based features we are computing the gradient in the image from light to dark regions so we will see hog features in the next slide so the hog features are slower than villa jones but these are accurate okay and there are many other feature based approaches like hall cascade so now it is the most common face detection algorithms are coming from the neural networks in that we are using convolution neural networks to perform face detection okay so these are highly highly accurate okay but these systems need very large amount of data to train and these require a sophisticated hardware like gpus to train these uh, these algorithms okay so we will now see uh, hog features which are histogram of oriented gradients in hog we count occurrences that means histograms of gradient orientations in an image so what is a gradient orientation so gradient orientation is computed in two steps so first for each cell in an image we will see uh, what is a cell cell is basically a small window in the image we compute the gradient so gradient is nothing but change in the pixel value from light to darker region and darker to lighter region okay so we will see how this is computed and then for each cell we will compute the histogram of the oriented gradients okay so that means let's say this is a small part of the image that we saw in the in one of the one of the previous slide okay and each square in this image shows a pixel okay so this selected pixel is let's say is is one of the pixel for which we can we want to compute the histogram of oriented gradients okay then what we will do is we will compute we will see all of its neighboring pixels and then we will compute the difference in the pixel value from the left to light region okay so so from left to right we will compute the difference in value from top to uh, bottom we will compute the pixel difference in the pixel value and from top bottom to top and from right to left will compute and then we will say what is the maximum of all the all the four values okay so the maximum of all the four values will be our gradient so for example in this case the gradient for this selected pixel is from left to right okay and the value of this gradient is the value in the the, the difference in the pixel value of right pixel and the left pixel okay so basically i we have seen only the four neighbors but in actually we can have eight neighbors so let's just summarize this uh, in uh, in in this example so where let's say this is the cell in the image okay where each box re represents a pixel okay and the orientation that we are seeing in this is the orientation so for example this pixel the orientation was from left to right but in actual we can have eight orientations okay left to right or uh, top left to bottom right and bottom left to top right like this kind of orientations we can have there are eight possible orientations in this way okay so for each uh, pixel we will compute this orientation and then we will take a small block in this cell we will then we will compute the histogram of this so that means in this case this is the kind of histogram we are getting that means uh, this left to right is 180 degree orientation and bottom to top is 90 degree orientation okay so this is how we are computing the uh, gradients so for example let's say if we run it on a real image we are getting this kind of Im image okay so this was our input image and this was the histogram of oriented gradients okay so we can see that face image is highly 
accurate in the in the in the whole features and the background color information is mostly gone and the face features like eyes nose lips and the face structure is still intact okay so that means histogram of oriented gradients capture faces very well okay so this is the output of the the hog algorithm so that means for each orientation like uh, 180 degree like 160 to 180 degree orientation are these many pixels and 100 to 120 are these many pixels so that means 100 to 120 orientations are the maximum in our image okay so this is the output of our of our hog algorithm and we will use these uh, histograms to perform to to learn a machine learning system for face detection okay so how to perform face detection using hog features so the first step is that we have to collect a lot of training data and we have to extract hog faces like what we have done in the last slide okay so that means let's say this is the one of the image we have extracted from the previous image which doesn't contain a face this is another image this is another image which contains a face this image doesn't contain a face this contains a uh, this contains a face okay i have shown a very few examples but in general we have to collect a large amount of training data so that we can train an accurate machine learning system okay and then after that we will train a face classifier on hog faces okay so which is a machine learning based system we can use any classifier uh, to classify the images into face or no face category we can use svms we can use knn or we can use neural networks okay neural networks are highly common these days and then we will we will use the sliding window classifier that we have seen in one of the previous slides to locate the face in the image okay so that means let's say if this is a small image that we are having then what we will be doing is we will first compute the hook features and then we will use the learned machine learning system and which will say whether the input image contains a face or it doesn't contain a face okay similarly for some some other image we will perform the same operations and it should say okay it doesn't contain a face in our example we will be using a pre-trained model so that we don't waste our time in training our own model because there are many face detection machine learning systems available which can be used freely and which are available for uh, for like for public use for commercial use as well okay so before going to the code example let's just see a few of the advantages of hog features why we have used this in our example so these hog features captures enough detail of the face as we have seen in one of the slide and these are not affected by small change in lightning and small change in the object shape and these are fast and easy to compute as compared to a neural network Okay, so this was an introduction to uh, face detection. So now let's just see a code example, like how can we perform face detection in Python? Okay, so uh, let me just check if this is still alive. Okay, so it has restarted for some reason. Okay, so we have to wait, like I have to reset our Google Drive. Okay, so for Google to mount Google Drive in Colab, we have to like use this command and uh, it will ask for an authorization code. Let me just copy that authorization code. Okay, it will take some time. <clears throat> okay, so it is mounted and we have changed the directory to, uh, yeah, so. Okay, so since it has restarted, we have to reinstall the face recognition package. 
so this is the only disadvantage of uh, collab that if the session expires we have to uh, reinstall this face recognition packages or like any package that we have installed okay so it is mostly done okay so it's done <clears throat> okay so now first we will see hog features how to compute hog features so i will be using matplotlib to plot like to show images and to plot some of the information on image we will be using sk image uh, to compute hog features Okay, and we will be using OpenCV to read images and to show some of to perform some of the operations on images. Okay, so it's install as uh, like it can be easily imported using import CV2. So let's just first read an image. Okay, so I have uh, an image called Cloney. Okay, so George Cloney. I will read it. So OpenCV reads the image in BGR format, not RGB format. So let's just convert the color. dot CVT colors image CV2 dot so BGR to RGB. Okay, so this is what we will be using. Okay, and then we will be using this hog function that we have imported from SK image. It returns the hog image. That means the output image that we will uh, that we will see uh, how the gradients uh, look in, in, the, in the input image and it will return the feature descriptor which is the histogram that I've showed you in the slides. So it's working is very simple. We just have to provide the input image. Others are like a few of uh, like you can you can keep those default or you can also change. So number of orientations setting it to eight performs good, performs very well. And uh, like this is a cell or the window that I have talked about in slides and block size we will keep it to be one cross one. Okay, and I have set multi-channel to be true so that we can get uh, better accuracy or you can also work on the grayscale and can set it in it as false. Okay, then I have plotted the original image and the hog image. So let's just run this cell and see how the output comes out. Okay, CV is not defined where. Okay, so this is CV2. Okay, so this is the output image. So this is the George Cloney, and this is the output image that we have seen. We have also seen this in slides. So why why are we computing features? Because neural networks can directly work on images. Uh, we can we can directly fed those. So let's just see uh, the shape of the image. The shape of the image is 530 cross 941 cross 3. Okay, so that means it is more than uh, like 5 lakh or 15 lakh uh, values. So the size of the feature descriptor that we have is only 15,000. So that means it's, uh, it's approximately like 100 times lesser size as compared to the original image. Okay, so this is how we compute the face images and then we can use sliding window classifier and we can train a uh, machine learning classifier to recognize whether the input image contains a face or it doesn't contain a face. Okay, so I will skip the training learning part because we will be using a pre-trained model and let's just see how we can perform face detection using the face recognition package that we have just installed. So we, will, we have imp imported a face recognition package here I will be using matplotlib to show the image and to plot the rectangles on the image and I will be using numpy and cv2 to perform some of the operations on the images and uh, like this line is important when you are working in browser in a python notebook so that because like browsers don't allow pop up uh, most of the time and you won't be able to see the image if you don't uh, write this line okay so let's just run it Okay, so I will read the same image that I showed you earlier. So maybe this clone you one. Okay, and we have converted the color. Let us see the image. 
okay so this is our input image okay so to perform face uh, detection so we will be using this face recognition package that we have uh, imported and it provides a method face locations it will automatically return the location of the face but by by using a sliding window classifier on the on the image so we will be using this line okay and we will return it in the face locations so basically if the input image contains multiple faces it will return multiple locations if it contains only one image it will uh, return only one uh, face so let us see uh, how many faces it has returned it returns it says that okay only one face is found in the input image okay so just to let like, now in the next section we will show uh, like how to plot rectangle on the faces so basically like i have taken the axis handle uh, in ax okay and then we will run a for loop for all the uh, like identified faces in the face locations variable okay and then uh, like it basically stores it in xy ws that means the uh, the xy location of the <coughs> top left corner and its uh, width and height of the rectangle okay and then we will be using rectangle from matplotlib to plot this rectangle and then we will add the patch to the axis handle that we have just shown so let's just see how the face detection is coming out okay so this is the output face okay so it is the face detection is performing very well let's just uh, read some other image and see how it performs okay so i want to read a image which contains multiple faces Okay, so this is an image which contains multiple faces. Okay, this is this contains two faces. So this face record, face location package, uh, the function should return two faces. Okay, it says okay, two faces are available. Okay, and then we will use this cell to plot the number of uh, the the low face locations. Okay, this is the location of the face. So we can see that like this, these faces are not set. These are slightly uh, like. Uh, align towards left and right but the face recognition is highly accurate because uh, the pretrained model in this function is from a neural network and these neural networks perform very very well okay so this was the face uh, loc uh, face detection okay it was highly simple but face recognition uh, requires a few uh, like more steps to perform so let's just directly move to the face recognition and then we can see uh, what is it that we can do okay so now let's just move to the face recognition and maybe then i will uh, then i will uh, like take some questions and then uh, we can see uh, like what what is it that we can do okay so face recognition is a multi step pipeline in which we are teaching computers how to detect and recognize a face okay so in this multi step uh, pipeline the first step is uh, to locate and extract the faces from the image so which is face detection that we have seen in the previous section okay so that means in this big image we will identify where the face is uh, like located in this image okay so that means uh, the face detection part will return the location of the face the second step is to represent the face as features or encodings okay so this encoder and decoder based architectures are highly common to encode a large size input into a small latent representation we can we say these as encodings or features so we call this encoder decoder as auto encoder in machine learning and it is trained uh, by constructing uh, so so these encoder decoder are trained by by making the decoder output the same input image that was given to the input uh, that that was given as input to the encoder okay so that means it is working in two steps where the input image is first encoded in in a small encoding by the encoder and then the decoder tries to decode the the same image from the encoding written by the uh, by the encoder so that means if the decoder can return the same image very accurately so we can say that this encoding is the best representation of the input image okay so to perform 
uh, to extract the features for our face recognition pipeline, we will throw away the detector and we will use the encoder, which was trained uh, uh, the, you, you, along with the decoder to identify the encodings of the input image. So for example, for each image, we will give the image as input to the encoder and we will get the encoding. For each different image, it will return a different embedding. So for different images, the encoder, if the encoder is trained very well, it should return a different encoding. Okay, similarly for other examples. So this first and third image looks similar. So we can say that it is somewhat similar. Uh, these encodings are somewhat similar, but like slightly different. Okay, so uh, like in our face recognition example, we will use a pre-trained encoder model uh, so that we, we don't have to train our own encoder model and many encoder models are freely available. So we will see how to do it in the using the face recognition package. Okay, so the third step is to compare the, the face with known faces. So that means in this step, we first need to create a database of the known faces. So I have created here the database of three faces. The first person, I don't remember, I don't know his name, but uh, this image is highly commonly used in uh, face recognition demos. The second is Leonardo DiCaprio and third was, is George Clooney. So in this, after creating the database, what we will be doing is we will be using our encoder to compute encoding for all the known faces. And then we will compute the encoding for the test image for which we want to recognize whose face is this. And then we will compute a distance to all the known images of this test image. Okay, so, so this is the step four, not step five. So we'll compute equivalent distance and apply a threshold. Okay, equilibrium distance is a highly commonly used in machine learning community. But if you don't know what is equilibrium distance, uh, like I have uh, a, an equation for you. So like we are just taking a mean square error. Uh, like basically we are taking a difference between each individual element of, of two of the, of the vector P and Q. We are square, we will take the sum of the squares and then we will take the square root. Okay, so this is the Euclidean distance that we highly commonly use in machine learning. So it can be used for n-dimensional uh, vectors. So like <laughs> we will be using this Euclidean distance in our case. And then uh, like we will compute this Euclidean distance for all the combinations. For example, we'll compute the Euclidean distance between the test image and all the, all the known faces. And then we will apply a threshold. That means we will use a distance rule to say whether uh, like a particular distance says whether uh, it belongs to the known face or not. So if the distance uh, comes out to be point less than 0.6, we will say it's a match. Otherwise, we will say it's not a match. Okay. So let's say what values are we getting for this case? We were getting these values uh, between this and this face is 0.95. This and second face is 0.85, and this and this face is 0.39. This is greater than 0.6, this is greater than 0.6. So we will say, okay, these are not the matching. Okay, so this is less than 0.6. So we can say that this is our face that, like that means the input, the test image face belongs to George Clooney. Okay, so this was a, a multi-step pipeline for face recognition. Now let's just see how to perform it in, uh, in, in Python using face recognition. Okay, uh, so we will also see some of the cool stuff using faces, but uh, like let's just first see how to recognize a face. So for this also, we will like import face recognition. And uh, I will be using matplotlib again to plot rectangles and some of the information on faces. And then I will be using OpenCV to uh, load images. So I have loaded uh, the three images that I showed you in the slides, uh, face demo, Cloney, George Cloney, and Leonardo. Okay, so let's just run it. Okay. So now the second step was to compute the face encodings from the face in images. So that means what we will be doing is we will be using our face recognition package. So it provides a method face encodings. Okay, so we will give uh, like input image, let's say that our first image was face demo, as we can see in the 19th cell. And 
we will be using the zeroth part. Why we are writing zero here is because the image can contain multiple faces. And we are making sure here that we are taking the first element of the output list. Okay, so this is how we will be doing it. We will repeat this for all uh, all of our non-face images. So basically, this is face encodings, and this is our clony. Yeah, okay, so and uh, this is zeroth element. We will name it as clony and uh, encoding. So basically, I have written it. I have already written it for you so that I can save my time. Okay, so this is how we can uh, compute the face encodings. And then we will put this non encodings in a list to create our database. So I have created a database only of three images, but you can actually create a database of multiple faces. So uh, like anything can, can, can work. Okay, so this is how uh, it will work. Okay, so it is still running. Okay, so it is done. Okay, so now we have to do what we have to do is we have to load our unknown uh, image. Let's say we load an unknown image of uh, George Clooney, which is not included in our uh, database. We will convert the color and then we will compute the face encoding for it. So using the same face recognition stuff, dot face encoding, uh, then we will use the unknown image. Okay, so why it is not showing me? Unknown image. Okay, so why we are not using zero here is because unknown image can contain multiple faces, and we want to recognize each face in the unknown image. So that's why we are not writing zero here. We will not write it here. Okay, so let's just name it unknown uh, face encodings. Okay, so let's just run it. Okay, so this is our our uh, input image, unknown image. So let's just see how to recognize or write a distance function uh, like in Python. So we will be using SciPy to compute Euclidean distance. What we will be doing is we will be running a for loop for all the encodings found in the unknown image. And then for each of these unknown encoding, we will run a for loop for all the images that are contained in our database. And then we will use the distance dot Euclidean to compute Euclidean distance between the known face encoding and the unknown face encoding. Okay, uh, so we will store the, uh, like the, the distances in a variable named result. And then we have applied a threshold of 0.6 here, which says if the threshold is less than 0.6, it will return true. That means the face is found. Otherwise, it will return if uh, it will it will return false. That means a face is not found. Okay. So we have uh, like done it using a if statement. Uh, okay. So if if at any of the location comes out to be true, we will say that okay, this image is found. George Clooney is found, and Leonardo DiCaprio is found. Let, let's just say. Let's just see which of the person is found in our image. Okay, so it says George Clooney is found. Okay, so let's just run it for uh, some other image, maybe multiple face images, uh, or let's just run it for Leonardo, some 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 image of Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo. Okay, we will run this. Okay, let's just make sure that it is not same as the. Okay, so it is not same as uh, the the known image in the in our database. So we have computed the face encodings. Okay, so this is the input image and uh, like basically test image and then let's just run our distance function. It says that found Leonardo DiCaprio in the photo. So let's just run a, an image which doesn't contain uh, a known face. Okay, so I have a woman image. So let's just run it for that woman.jpg. Okay, so this is the image that we have. Okay, so this is a woman image which is not contained in our database. So, okay, it says that unknown found in the image. That means distance for, uh, for of this test image to all the images in our database is greater than 0.6. Okay, so I just want to run it uh, one more time uh, because I want to show you that it works for multiple faces. Uh, okay, so this is the 
which is our image with multiple faces. Okay, and then let's just run that is, uh, distance function. Okay, it, it found both the people, Leonardo DiCaprio and George Clooney. Okay, so that means like our face recognition stuff is working. We have used a pre-trained uh, encoder, uh, which was like provided in this face recognition package and it is working perfectly. It is open source, so you can use it in uh, your uh, own applications. Okay, so this was face recognition. So I would like to like uh, tell about uh, one more uh, example of face recognition of, of uh, a face recognition package. So basically, let's just uh, like do some fun stuff with the face images. Okay, so let's just first see what are facial landmarks. Facial landmark is a 68 point uh, facial landmark model where we can identify the location of the face landmarks. For example, eyes, eyebrows, lips, nose, and the chin structure. Okay, so this is a 68 point face landmarks. Which can which which has identified accurately the location of the left eye, right eye, the nose bridge, and the nose tip, and eyebrows, chin structure, and what else. So we can use this face landmark model for multiple purposes. The one purpose is that we can play with these face images uh, to do some fun stuff. For example, let us apply uh, lipstick on this face, and we can do that. Okay, we can also apply sunglasses. We can also apply mask on the face, uh, and and like we can we can do multiple stuff okay so uh, like other than the fun stuff we can also use it for improving the accuracy of our uh, face recognition uh, pipeline in which what we can do is we can uh, like like let's say if the face is slightly uh, like looking towards right or left and the face recognition accuracy is not coming out to be good what we can do is we can use this 68 point uh, face landmark model to align the face uh, like towards front okay so we can use this using a fine transformation so let's just see how to do some fun stuff with the face images okay so let's just read this Leonardo image this time okay Leonardo okay Okay, so this is the Leonardo image. So we will do some fun stuff. Before that, I want to show what these face landmarks contain. Okay, so this returns the chin structure, with that means the X Y location of the chin structures. It returns the location of left eyebrow, right eyebrow, nose bridge, nose tip, left eye, right eye, top lip, and bottom lip. Okay, so that means it returns most of the face facial landmarks. And let's just see how to do some fun stuff. Okay, so this is the image that we loaded. So to compute facial landmarks, we will use this face recognition package and it provides a function called face landmarks and we will use this uh, image and face uh, landmarks list. Okay, so this is how we have stored it. Okay, so it should uh, like identify all the facial landmarks of this input image. Okay, so it is, or is it still running or is it done? Okay, so it's done. So now we will use uh, matplotlib to plot lines on the faces and polygons. Uh, like matplotlib.patches will use polygon uh, to do some fun stuff. Like let's just see what is a fun stuff that we will be doing. So, so this uh, facial landmark, this face landmark function also returns facial landmarks of multiple faces if they are contained in the image. So what we will be doing is we will be using like running a for loop for all the uh, faces in the facial landmarks list. Okay. And then we will be using M lines from a matplotlib to plot line on the, let's say uh, I have picked only a left eyebrow and right eyebrow. Okay. Uh, so let's just plot a line over it. So we will uh, like, so basically the facial landmarks is a, dictionary and for each of the face we will be accessing left eyebrow a key and then for all the points we will be plotting a line on the face uh, like from, from these points and then we will add a patch to the axis the same we will do for the right eyebrow okay and then what we will be using is we will be using polygon to uh, like fill top lip and bottom lip with some color okay so that we can apply lipstick on it so what we have done is uh, like we have filled it with light salmon color and the edge color to be orange 
and we have added these patches to the axis and then let's just see how it comes out to be okay so this is this uh, like this is highly accurate the lipstick is there and we can we have changed the color of the eyebrows me basically you can increase the marker size here and it will uh, directly uh, like uh, replace the uh, original eyebrows so let's just try it with a human face how it how it looks okay so this is the woman and uh, this is our woman image so we have computed facial landmarks for it and uh, okay so this is like the c okay this is like very perfect the eyebrows are uh, like original eyebrows are uh, replaced with the new color okay and the lipstick is also very good okay you can also see that the, these landmarks uh, are highly accurate because this face is slightly rotated towards right but it still uh, like detects the facial landmarks very accurately okay let's just uh, like run it for some other image maybe face demo image this time face demo the png okay so this is the image let's just see how it works so basically the difference between this image and the previous image is that like his mouth is open as compared to others so let's just see if we can apply lipstick on his face okay this is this is like uh, for very very well like it's, it's highly perfect right so it mean that means that you can uh, like apply uh, like uh, this facial uh, like uh, we can, you can use these facial landmarks to do much of the fun stuff with the uh, with the faces so you can put sunglasses is using the eye location and the chin structure and uh, you can also put mask on the face image so you can perform multiple things okay so this was a small fun stuff with the face images uh, so you basically using this landmark model you can also swap faces so i haven't included that in our code example but uh, let's just move to the next section uh, i think it's almost an hour and i will try to finish it uh, in in next Ten minutes, so that I can take a few questions. Okay, so this was uh, facial landmarks. So now I will, I, I want to leave you with a take-home exercise where you can build your own smart homes uh, uh, like system using uh, whatever we have learned in this uh, lecture. So basically, uh, like you can use a hardware Raspberry Pi and Pi camera. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's a very small hardware, uh, like less smaller than my hand, and uh, like. It come like you can also attach a camera to it, which is a Pi camera, or you can also attach a USB camera. But USB camera is generally bulky, so uh, like and this Pi camera is very small in size, so it's very convenient to use it, so that you can convert it in this kind of structure, and you can mount it in at your uh, like entry location or exit location of your home, and can so that it can monitor who is coming to your home. Okay, so to set up the Raspberry Pi without any extra hardware, you can refer to this. Uh, blog so that you will you will easily set up Python and uh, other libraries on it to install face recognition package that we have used in our Colab uh, notebook. So you can use this uh, reference to install face recognition on Raspberry Pi. So basically, uh, in the slides, I showed you that neural networks are highly computationally expensive, but these are computationally expensive during training. During testing, uh, we are only doing inference. So these are these can be used on smaller devices like Raspberry Pi, and uh, like or if you, or if it is not working, you can reduce the FPS. Maybe you can work it at two FPS or three FPS so that you can uh, do face perform face recognition very accurately. And then you can use this blog to access the camera live on on OpenCV. Uh, like using OpenCV, I mean to say and then use this lecture to perform face recognition okay so let's say you have installed it to the entry of your home and now you what you want to do is you want to notify let's say if you are out out from your home and someone enters your home and you want this system to notify you automatically so then what you can do is you can send push notifications to your phone from the raspberry pi so to send push notifications refer to this blog and you can you can send uh, like uh, either you can uh, you can send some uh, like push notification what you have to do is you have to create a small android application for your mobile phone uh, so that it can it can uh, directly send you push notifications using a proxy or like uh, or maybe maybe what you can do is you can also uh, like use some local hardware to uh, 
to access uh, this kind of uh, uh, like functionality for example uh, like we can use a uh, what what we say you can use our local Wi-Fi to communicate between the phone and uh, Raspberry Pi in which you don't have to compute your own uh, like application. Okay, so this was all about this uh, lecture. So now let me tell you who I am. So I'm pursuing PhD at IIIT Delhi. I primarily work in computer vision and reinforcement learning. Uh, my thesis topic is on uh, multi-camera target tracking. And if you want to access my work profile, my publications or my projects that I'm doing, uh, so you can go to this web page. I have listed everything about myself. And uh, like we have a small AI community called Think AI, where we are providing this kind of tutorials, this kind of lectures. So you can you, you can join this community and uh, can benefit from the lectures that we are doing or from uh, the, like we are, we are basically spreading AI knowledge uh, to, to people uh, like who wants to do something in AI. So, so you can use this community. Okay, so we are also on Quora, where we are uh, like more than 14,000 followers. So you can follow us on Quora on this link. Okay, so on ThinkAI WhatsApp group, we are more than 2,000 at this point of time. Okay, so this was uh, it about this lecture. Uh, so uh, what we will be doing is we can share these lecture slides with you uh, so that, uh, <clears throat> so we can share these lecture slides with you. Uh, uh, so that you can like reuse the like uh, reuse the material that we have uh, used. Like we will share these uh, slides with those people who will uh, give us feedback. So let me just share a feedback form with 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 all of you. Okay, so this is the feedback form. Uh, so let me just share it with uh, with you. Okay, so I'm not sure if I can. Okay, so this is the live comment. I am giving you. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure if I can. Okay, so I'm not sure how to put it here. Okay, so let me just let me just put it uh, from my mobile. Mm. So basically. Uh, okay, so. okay, so this is the, let me just share uh, the link with you on the live chat. So fill the feedback form and we will share the slides and course. Okay, so how how to access live chat here. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is the form that you can uh, fill and those people who will provide uh, the feedback on the lecture we will share the lecture slides with them meanwhile uh, let me just take a few of uh, few of the questions that are there uh, there are so many questions <clears throat> okay so let me just start open cv is a library yes open cv is a python module that reads with open okay multiple faces in a single image yes uh, I think in the code I have showed you how to recognize multiple faces in the image. Uh, so this face recognition package allows you to do that. Or the code that we have showed works with the multiple faces. Pip install face recognition is not working. Uh, it should work. I have uh, like showed you live. Uh, so basically, if you are running it in Py uh, Python notebook, you have to add an exclamation mark before this. So like if I want to show it. Uh, Okay, so this is how you have to do it. You have to put explanation mark before uh, before it. Okay, so okay, so these are common questions. Let me just take a few of the technical questions. Open source tools for open, uh, open source libraries. Okay, it is a library for so if it's not only face detection, it has many other applications. Yes, yes, you can you can basically perform uh, like 
yeah you can use it for multiple applications maybe for other classification based approaches as well yes i think this is someone answered it very nice common face detector algorithm open cv is library is it like knn algorithm uh basically you can say yes we are we are finding uh, the first nearest neighbor to it the if we if we set k equal to 1 okay so arrow ka direction kya show kar raha hai i'm not sure what arrow you are talking about thanks sir very nice discussion hog works for grayscale images yes hog was designed for grayscale images only but we have used it for uh, multiple channels to improve uh, so basically what we are doing is we are taking average over of all the three channels so that we can get better accuracy okay so it, originally hog works only on grayscale images okay so link for the code we will share so fill the feedback form we will share the slides with you can we do it in uh, vs code uh, visual studio code i am not sure if you can do it i haven't used it ever uh, please share the code okay let me just say basically the colored images we have three channels but with gray scale we only have one channel thus making easy to compute okay i am not sure uh, the reason we use gray scale images is to reduce the processing time yes i have uh, given you the link in the face recognition so that uh, you can see how to work with it yes we will share the slides uh, uh so i think uh, um, this go data science uh, can comment more on whether it will be available uh so how to decide a threshold this is a good question i think someone asked a very good question okay so basically like it depends on the lightning condition and various aspects but uh, like what i have seen in practice using this face recognition package is that it is trained on uh, so it is trained on uh, <clears throat> so basically it is trained on uh like uh, like it is trained using neural network and uh, <clears throat> and this performs very well with low lightning and high lightning conditions so you should be able to use this uh, 0.6 threshold in most of the cases but if there is something which which uh, which like hinders the performance the the performance hindrance may happen when the face is not fully visible for example if it is occluded or, or it is rotated towards left or right so in these cases our uh, threshold may not work properly so so the so let's say if you have deployed it uh, uh, like in, at your home on a raspberry pi so you may want to see the location how many times an occluded face will come so you can first try to improve the uh, installation of your uh, raspberry pi and then what you can do is you can uh, capture a few images and then try to see the distance that it is coming uh, that is coming from uh, from the uh, the new images and the images in your uh, in your database and then you can set a threshold setting a threshold is uh, important but in many of the i have tried it in many multiple cases and it point 6 was working very fine okay so it should work for your case as well but you may have to tweak it and you can tweak it by capturing a few of the images and by visualizing the distances uh, like uh, uh, like of the of the unknown images and the known images i hope i have answered your question harsh great work uh, okay thank you drop off uh, to join in weekly it. it was a great session okay thank you for your comments like uh, i am feeling happy that uh, you people liked it uh i'm going i'm going to apply it on my friend's image yes sure play with his image how can you use binary classification to detect person with mask and without mask yes okay i think i think someone asked a very good question okay uh so uh, maybe maybe what we can do is uh just keep in touch with us uh like we can we can give, give our next session to uh to recognize mask faces and non mask faces Okay, so we maybe maybe we can give our next session to it. 
okay so likewise mobile application does the makeups yes but like these are highly sophisticated uh, i have used an open source uh, package is the is it the process to do recognition on video same if yes 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 so basically in video what you are doing is you are running a for loop for all the frames in the video and and you are doing it for all the frames okay so if you are running live maybe you can control your fps and if you are using it on a local video then you have to do it for every frame and then you can use the same uh, like approach that i have showed in you in, in the code uh, uh, like and you can you can run it in a, in a for loop please share the link for whatsapp chat as well yes i will do it let me just do it so just fill the form uh, fill the feedback form in the feedback form we have given the link for the whatsapp chat or maybe let me just give you it give this to you again okay uh, so this may happen that uh, so this may get full in some time okay uh, so please share the link for whatsapp chat we have shared uh, mention here thanks a lot okay thank you please send me the link through chat uh, linkedin profile okay so this is a uh, like feedback form please fill it those people who will fill the feedback form will we will surely share the slides uh, with them we got it it's posted got it can you share the whatsapp group link to yes uh, we have shared share ppt slides and code files we will see if we can share code file but we will surely share the ppt uh, whatsapp group we have given how do we define the size of the sliding window this is an uh, this is another important question <clears throat> so basically uh, like in uh, traditional uh, face detectors what we had to do is we had to uh, generate multiple window sizes so for example uh, like i have shown only one size in our in in the slides but in general we have to generate many sizes so that we can identify the faces which are small and uh, faces which are highly big in the image so in deep learning what we are doing is we use region proposals okay what we do is we generate man, multiple proposals and then we use convolution neural networks to uh, to perform uh, like uh, like this convolution operation on those windows okay so this is how we do it uh, using neural networks maybe uh, like in the next lecture that we we if we plan on mask and no mask detection maybe i can talk about how to how we set uh, sliding windows the size of the sliding window in neural networks but in the traditional system it was like totally brute force we have to set multiple uh, sizes can we use camera webcam instead of every raspberry pi yes yes you can do it so basically uh, like i hope i have answered your question roof how to get started with ai okay so join our ai community maybe join uh, go, go data science and they are doing very good job in providing uh, uh, like knowledge on ai so you should be able to start with ai or you can also join uh, the whatsapp group that i have shared with you and you should be able to start with it can we get the code share it's tough to code listen at the same time okay so uh, like we will uh, see if we can share the code why did we use zero in the code i think i have told it so we have used zero because the image may contain multiple faces and uh, we should we we want to uh, like get only the first image in the in the uh, in the, uh, from the output list so basically this <clears throat> face encodings function returns uh, a list for uh, for multiple faces if if they are contained in the image so by like applying this zero we are making sure that we are accessing the zeroth element of that list okay dlib should be installed now if you install face recognition dlib will be automatically installed or you can also use dlib uh, like uh, in comparison of uh, face recognition can we use arduino instead of raspberry pi a modern arduino i have uh, seen that they have they have provided python access i am not sure if you can install face recognition on that uh, like maybe maybe you can give it a try and maybe you can let us know or let uh, all all people know so that we can try it on arduino so the main advantage of arduino is that it's highly cheap as compared to raspberry pi 
Okay, so maybe you can try it. I haven't tried it on Arduino. Else it will throw error. Please share the code. Arduino, you know actually, okay. How to get the code, how do the image decode. How does the image from a decoder match with the input before the encoder? How does the image from a decoder match with the input? So basically what we are doing is we are uh, training the encoder decoder architecture using uh, like mean square loss, mean square error uh, loss. Uh, and we try to like uh, reproduce the same input image using the encoding. Okay, so basically what we do is we use back propagation algorithm to compute uh, the weights of the encoder and decoder. So basically these encoder and decoder are neural networks uh, which are trained uh, by gradient descent based methods and back propagation is the commonly used algorithm for that. Uh, so maybe uh, like I'm not sure if you if you if you are aware about training neural networks. If not, maybe we can uh, we can see. Uh, Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, like keep in association with the Go Data Science or uh, like join our community and we can uh, like discuss this in one of the future lecture. Okay, LinkedIn profile, how to use face mask detection. Okay, so I haven't discussed face mask detection. Maybe you can train uh, a classifier for it. Uh, I'm not sure if I can answer this uh, yeah, like from the from the lecture that we take maybe maybe in the future lectures we can take this which library will you will use to do face mask detection uh let's just answer it in the next uh, lecture how to use it using webcam i have given a link for a reference sliding window classifier has fixed length of the box so if the human face is very small it becomes too difficult yes i have answered this question earlier so in the traditional approaches we used to generate multiple sliding windows but with neural networks, we don't have to do is we the neural network can automatically generate region proposals and uh, like we can use convolution neural networks to get features from it. Can we use this algo to work on words if we plot it in a graph? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure. What do you mean to plot words on in a graph? How do we train models? I haven't discussed training. Maybe in one of the future lecture we can do so. VS Code, I'm sorry, I haven't used VS Code ever. Uh, so you have to try it on your own, sir, multiple faces. Yes, it will work on multiple faces. Just try our code and it will automatically work on multiple faces. How do we use face recognition with the videos? I have given a link. So you can use uh, OpenCV to access it uh, like a video or a webcam live. And then you can use our code uh, like to perform face recognition on frame by frame. Can we use our phones instead of Raspberry Pi? Yes, you can use your phones, but I'm not sure if you can uh, do use face recognition for that. Maybe you can use TensorFlow Lite. Okay, so TensorFlow Lite also has some face recognition APIs. Maybe you try that and uh, try uh, TensorFlow Lite version, and you can you can directly work on uh, like your mobile phones. Please share the code. We will see if you use Raspberry Pi, is it going to work with all uh, distances? Uh, you have to tweak the distance. You may have to tweak the distance. I think I have already discussed it earlier. Uh, but let's see if you can, uh, like, the 0.6 value works for most of the cases that I have tried. It should work for you as well. But you may have to try, uh, like, uh, tweak it a little based on uh, whatever you are doing. OK, thank you, sir. We will see the next section. Okay, fill. please fill the feedback form. Uh, okay, so we will share the slides with those who will fill the feedback form. And uh, like you can join our WhatsApp group, you can subscribe uh, about data science. And then we can see uh, like about, about one of the future lectures. Is it Snapchat uh, is using the same technique? I'm not sure about Snapchat. They must be using some proprietary technique. I have used an open source one. Can we detect a man with beard? Yes, this is the right question. Yes, you can do it. So basically, this example, the face demo image I've shown, uh, the person had a little bread, okay, a little beard. Uh, so these uh, face recognition packages are highly accurate to uh, compute the encoding for faces images. And if the person has beard and if it doesn't have a beard, a beard uh, 
like these encoding should be uh, like able to recognize uh, the man okay so or if it doesn't uh, recognize maybe you have to tweak a threshold a bit okay uh, so i haven't tried with this example so this thank you for the question bhavya uh, so i hope i have answered your question i'm not that familiar with face recognition what can i learn the basic of uh, i think i think we have given a pretty simpler implementation and uh, like uh, very like simple introduction to face recognition i hope if you rewatch the like the lecture i think i think you should be able to follow it again uh, like i hope you will you will be able to follow do face filters use the same algo so basically face filters are different than face recognition so they use a different kind of algorithm how can i create an artificial intelligence like jarvis uh, we haven't uh, talked about uh, some smart home stuff maybe uh, like just stay tuned maybe we can take uh, talk the about these in one of the future lecture can we check the presence of something or someone in and notify yes see our take home exercise slide and uh, you should be able to get the references for that in present time everyone in public is going to wear mask yes this face recognition system will not i'm not sure if it will work on the face recognition in the research community we have restarted the face recognition work uh, to perform face recognition with uh, with when the person has wear mask okay uh, this is a challenge i'm not sure it will work what you can do is you can uh, put uh, like this uh, you can you can create uh, uh, you can you can mold your database in that way so that you can include uh, the images both the images where the person uh, wears mask and it doesn't wear a mask okay so you can change uh, this uh, database and it should it should be able to work uh, perfectly for you again anyone can tell what are the process i'm not sure uh, what can you share the video yes it will be public i guess thanks for answering on both the sliding and on quarter decoder will definitely yes thank you uh, like feeling good that i have answered your question i want to do project on ai based face recognition attendance system yes please use our slides maybe you can create a database a bigger database and you can do that how can we say that uh, only the zero first image is correct no 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 what we are doing is it is returning a list okay so uh, to access uh, the encodings from the list we are using this zero okay so we we anyway know that uh, our image contains only only one image okay so uh, to access the elements of the list we have used zero that's why we have used it i okay okay i have uh, run through all the all the questions uh, okay thank you all for attending the this lecture please fill the feedback form we will share uh, these slides to our email with those who will fill the feedback form okay i think i think we are done with all the questions and uh, like uh, stay tuned for future lectures maybe subscribe to this go data science and then uh, uh, like you will get notification about future lectures okay so this was it what type of database can we use for store collection of images uh, store collection of images means what type of database can we use for to store collection of images uh mm, 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 mm. are you asking like what do you like uh, like i have uh, sh like i think you are asking how can we store it in uh, python so i have used a simple list maybe you just that you directly use that list it will it will perfectly work for you or you can use a dictionary if you want okay uh, feeling good that you like the lecture okay so stay tuned we will uh, provide more sessions like this uh, so fill the feedback form and uh, like follow our whatsapp group i'm sharing the whatsapp group link again uh, so maybe you can you can join our whatsapp group okay we'll get the code along with the slides i will see if we can share the code uh, but if you go through the lecture again i think i have uh, very well explained the code and you can get the code and why we don't want to share the code is that so that you will i uh, like apply some effort to uh, perform all this stuff or like maybe maybe we can share the code we will see okay feedback form let me share the feedback form again uh for an in system where did you save the images you used i've shared in in a list where is the feedback form let me just give you okay so this is the feedback form this is the feedback form guys <clears throat> interesting session can you please share again the material which you shared in between the lecture on whatsapp like slides 
okay okay so this is a feedback form just fill the feedback form we haven't shared any slides with anyone yet uh, maybe after this lecture we will share uh, the slides with people who will uh, like fill this feedback form okay and uh, also join our whatsapp group uh, so we will we should be able to provide you Okay, so I think I'm done with most of the questions, sir. Can we store thousands of images in list? Yes, you can store it, but it will be very uh, like difficult to access that. Maybe you can use dictionary in that case. You can use dictionary in that case. We want more sessions. Please uh, like, uh, subscribe, go data science or join our WhatsApp group. Uh, we will surely be coming with more uh, lectures. Uh, I think I have answered this question. Yes, sir. nice work. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, okay. So I think I think we will finish in some time. Uh, fill the. I am repeating again. Fill the feedback form, uh, and uh, we will share the slides with you. And uh, meantime, maybe you can also join our WhatsApp group. I'm sharing it again. Okay, so I think uh, we are mostly done with all the questions. It was great, uh, like uh, answering your questions. We will we will surely come back again with more lectures. So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe us. Subscribe our uh, like this YouTube channel, Go Data Science or uh, join our WhatsApp group. We'll surely uh, like come with the future sessions. Okay, so this is the WhatsApp group. This is the WhatsApp group. Bef just before your comment. I have filled feedback from where do I get code? Uh, it will be shared over email. It will be shared over email. I'm not sure if you will share code, but I will talk uh, to others and if okay, then we'll share the code as well. Yeah, Android, like uh, what we can do is we can provide uh, like TensorFlow introduction and you can use TensorFlow Lite on Android. So, and in this way you can surely do uh, much of the great stuff. Okay, I hope uh, we have uh, answered the questions. Okay, so 